Hockey has had quite the many tragedies over the years, but here are the five most tragic moments in hockey history. Number six, death of Alexei Sheriponov. Sheriponov was playing for the KHL's Envigard Omsk at the time. After finishing up a shift with line mates at Pavel Rosa and Imor Yagayer, Sheriponov was sitting on the bench and proceeded to turn white and ultimately pass out. His teammates began shouting for assistance. Medical staff attempted to revive him, but were unsuccessful. He was transferred to a local hospital and was pronounced dead due to a heart attack, according to a report on ESPN.com. To this day, that is the most mysterious death of all time in regards to a hockey player dying. How could a 19-year-old in supposed great health simply just die of a heart attack after finishing a routine shift? If there was an issue, why wasn't the staff aware of it? An investigation was launched after Sheriff Pinov's death, but it complicated the situation even further. Each report offered a different explanation for his death. Many people have been critical of the Omsk medical staff, but Sharon Pinov did go through a battery of tests before the 2007 NFL draft, and there's no indication of health problems. Number five, Vladimir Kostanitov, Vileisha v. Vetesnov limo accident. Following the Detroit Red Wings Stanley Klump win in 1997, Kostanitov, Festivov, and one of the Wings trainers, Sergei Matanesko, hired a limousine to drive them home. The driver lost control of the car and crashed into a tree. His license was actually suspended at the time for drunk driving. Mistanikov and Kostanikov spent considerable time in the coma, while Festivov got out with only minor injuries. This example is tragic and maddening for a few reasons. First and most importantly, these three men did the smart thing by hiring a ride home because they knew they'd been drinking. Yet they still ended up in an accident, and two of them had life-altering injuries. Secondly, most of the media likes to give the illusion that Kosanitov's recovery is a positive story, but it is not. He can barely walk, even with the help of a walker. He sustained severe brain trauma to the point where he's been put in home and requires a 24-hour care. A man tried to make the right choice, and he was left with severe injuries, and while his perseverance should be admired, it's tragic and a heartbreaking story. Number four, death of Bill Masterton. Bill Masterton is the only NHL player to be killed as a direct result of on-ice play. It's upsetting, but also incredible that he was the only death during a period of time where they weren't wearing helmets. In a game against the Oakland Seals, Mastertone was carrying a puck at full speed before he was met with a hit from Ron Harris. The contact knocked him backwards and the impact made him lose consciousness before he even hit the ice. He was rushed to the hospital and unfortunately never regained consciousness. It's mind-boggling to think for a good portion of NHL's history, players were not wearing helmets. Imagine a Scott Stevens type of hit being delivered on an unsuspecting player skating at full tilt. Now picture it with the recipient of the hit not wearing a helmet. The NHL has an award named after him for the player that demonstrates qualities of perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey. A fitting tribute. Number three, death of Luke Bourdon. Luke Bourdon was the 10th overall draft pick by the Vancouver Canucks in the 2005 entry draft. Any fan of Canadian junior hockey has an image ingrained in their mind of him pointing to the Team Canada crest after celebrating a goal at the World Juniors. Borden was only scratching the surface of a promising career with the Canucks before the unthinkable happened. Bourdon was involved in a horrific motorcycle collision in 2008 when he hit a tractor trailer after losing control of his Suzuki GSX R1000. He was killed on impact and his bike was shattered into pieces. The RCMP said that Bourdon's inexperience with motorcycles likely had a lot to do with the crash. Another preventable death and an utter shame. Number two, 2011 Locomotive Yaroslav plane crash. The Locomotive Yaroslav air disaster occurred on September 7th, 2011. It had 44 fatalities, including former NHLers Joseph Vashik, Peval Dimitria, Carlise Scrattons, Roslan Sali, and Karel Ruchnik. When the weird dynamics of the crash are described, it almost seems impossible how such an error could occur. The plane did not even reach flying altitude as it was only 20 feet off the ground when it struck a tower and mast. It then caught on fire and the only person survived the crash. An investigation was immediately launched and provided us with the reasons for the crash. The pilots falsified their knowledge of the craft and didn't really know what they were doing. They said the only way this could have happened was if one pilot accelerated while the other activated the brakes. Truly heartbreaking. Number one, three NHL enforcers die in 2011. Yours truly, like a lot of other people, is a proponent of fighting in hockey. If you take fighting out of the game, there's no consequences for players taking cheap shots. Stick work and dirty plays would be most definitely increasing. Enforcers help keep the star players safe, but they are subjecting themselves to major damage. At the end of the day, it is only the sport that allows bare knuckle brawling. In 2011, the hockey world lost Rick Ripien, Derek Bugard, and Wade Bullock. Bullock and Ripien's death were both ruled as suicides, while Bogard died of a lethal combination of alcohol and painkillers according to NewYorkTimes.com. An alarming commonality between the three players is that they were all battling depression. An even more alarming commonality is the fact that they were all enforcers. I'm not an MD and won't pretend to be like one like Mark Ricci and don't know if there's a correlation between the cumulative punches to the face, head and severe brain trauma, but red flags certainly have to go up. Well guys, thank you so much for watching and making it to the end of the video. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to Athletic Avenue and ring that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thanks.